Welcome to Counter Chris TV. Um, our special guest today is Atomic Kings uh, lead singer Ken Rog, and I want to thank you, Ken, um, for reaching out to me. Um, I, I was kind of curious. How did you uh, hear about us? Um, I, actually, I saw. Um, I had kind of been following you guys a little bit because we were putting some some media stuff out, okay. and and you guys kind of came around in a roundabout way. So I thought I'd hit you up, and I got your email address. Well, I'm and... so glad you did, you know, because of course um, I, I um, I've been a fan like a lot of people of your bass player Greg Chasen for years, stuff he's yeah. done, and yeah. um, I'd heard of Atomic Kings, and um, I'd actually been wanting to um, hook up with somebody from a band and and, and get an interview. So. I was so happy um, when you reached out to us. So again, I can't thank you enough. And so if you if you like the way this comes out today, um, we're definitely gonna keep in touch anytime you have anything to promote. Um, talk to you for now. Sure. Um, so, so thanks for that. So how long has the Atomic Kings been together? Uh, we, we got together, uh, really it started, Greg and I kind of hooked up, really the early part of 2021, Greg and I hooked up on another project. Um, I was aware of, of another project they were doing, um, and and a drum of that, I was in a project 30 years ago, Jimmy Taft, him and I had done a project about 25 years ago, so I was aware of the project, Greg was a bass player, and I really loved the guitar player in that project, and that turns out that that was Ryan McKay. Uh, so move forward to the first part of 2021, Greg and I were doing a, a side project, I, you know, him and I had been kind of but threatening to work with one another. And so we got together, we, we did that project a few times and uh, the project ended up not being what, what we wanted it to be, but the, the both of us knew that we definitely wanted to work together. So um, at, at that point, they, they were finishing up another project and uh, they reached out to me and, uh, you know. Let me ask you, so um, were any of the songs on the new album, um songs from the original project or um, Atomic King's materials that all new? Uh, Atomic King materials is all new um, with the, uh, this, the songs are new. Yeah. Um, there's some, there's some ideas there that, that are older ideas. Um, we had the, the very first single we put out is, is all I want. And that was actually a, a riff that Greg had, had wrote back in the seventies. Wow. Um, wow. And so you know, Ryan had some great ideas, and so um, they they sent me some song ideas that they were working with, and I wrote some lyrics and melody to it. And you know, we got together, and and uh, you know, we've been together ever since. It was just so there's nothing wrong with um, rehashing like uh, material that you ran, you know, from years ago. Because I, I remember just as an example, doing an interview with uh, John Karabi a number of years ago when he had his Unplugged album come out. And um, one of the new tracks on there, um, I told him how much I loved it. And he's like, you know, that, that's a song that I've had sitting around like for almost 25, 30 years. Yeah. And, and, and you I never know. A good song is a good song that just goes to prove that, you know? Yeah. You know, they sometimes they, they stand the test of time before you even write them. And so, you know, yeah. it was a great work. And, uh, and uh, so, we, you know, we, we made it into a song. And, and uh, from that point, we, we really just started writing. Mm -hmm. um, and and we really didn't have any boundaries, any any fences, any rules. We we um, you know we were all very like minded in the music that we liked, and uh, you know it, it really you know it's one every now and then you hear about some of those stories where where you get some people together and and it's just magic and and uh, you know this really is one of those one of those cases. Yeah, you know what, what what's um, what's interesting to me is is in, in listening to the album and prepping for today's interview. Um, I, I, it really it comes across as an album that is really kind of um, based around the song. You know, uh, the songwriting I, I feel is very strong within this unit. Um, and, yes. And um, I can tell just by listening that you guys obviously are on kind of like 70s, like kind of hard rock, blues stuff. Um, and without even trying to, without even knowing this ahead of time, um, when I'm listening to the album for the first time, I'm kind of thinking, you know, what does this remind That's exactly what it reminds me, kind of old 70s blues rock. Um, the only yeah. band I could kind of make a, a fair comparison to really but say kind of got a you know that's maybe the influence come out is I hear a little bit of a bad um, company influence interestingly enough I find out that you also are involved with a bad company and Led Zeppelin <laughs> tribute yeah. Band. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. Guilty, as, guilty as charged it's all um, right though you know I, I, I've been a big supporter of tribute bands and I'll tell you why especially um, I have a lot of fun going to the ones where they not just do the music but they dress the part and uh, to me, it's almost like rock and roll theater. And 
people I know um, have a habit to kind of trash on tribute bands because, oh, they're just failed musicians playing other people's music. But again, you're talking to a guy who can't, who's, can't play a lick of music. I'm, I'm simply a music fan. So for anybody yeah. get up, be able to get up on stage and, you know, cover somebody else's material, let alone write original tunes, I think that takes a certain level of talent. Well, it, it, you're you're absolutely right. We all have, you know, our, our influences are, are very old school. Yeah. You know, um, Greg, Greg is, um, he's a product of the 70s. Um, he's a product of of Boz and and uh, you know the band Free and obviously Bad Company sure. and, and Deep Purple and some of those um, bands. Uh, Jimmy and Ryan as well. Ryan Ryan sometimes leans over. He gets into the pop and 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 some cheap trick. And you know Ryan played with uh, Louis Prima Jr. for a while. So Ryan is a is a very tasty, very broad, talented guitar player. And, um, you know, obviously my influences are, are, are obvious, you know, and we, we, we wear our influences on our sleeve, you know, I, everybody I does all that, you know, and, and yeah. I think that the, the, the greatest compliment I can give to Atomic Kings and listening to the entire album is while I hear kind of your influences, you know, which is based kind of bluesy kind of seventies rock, um, stuff. Um, it's not, it's not like, um, okay, they're trying to be Led Zeppelin. They're trying to be bad company it's just kind of your influence and yet at the same time amazingly enough the atomic kings seem to have a great original sound it's kind of like yeah you take me back to kind of that 70s sound but you don't sound like everybody that came from the 70s well thank you thank you for that you know yeah. we, it uh there, there really was not um there, there's not a lot of pre-planning that goes into uh to what we write you know ryan or greg um, we'll, we'll come up with a riff and, and, uh, you know, whoever comes up with a riff, um, and, and a lot of stuff we write, we'll just be messing around at a rehearsal or at a sound check. Uh, we, we just did a show over the weekend and, and during sound check, I think we, I think we may have wrote two Atomic King songs, but, right. um, you know, that, um, to your point that the songs, uh, are what they are, that, that is one thing that I, I love about Atomic Kings is, when when we're writing a song, we we get into a certain style of a song, and we're able to stay in that style till the song. It's kind of like a vibe. Good. You get the vibe. Each kind yeah. of song on the album yeah. has its own little vibe. And yeah. Uniquely, they fit on the same album. You know, like they, that's how they, albums they, were made when we were growing up. You know, like um, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, and that's you know that's um that's another thing of our influences um shining through is is we're all from. You know, we're all from the big album areas uh, era where there's, you know, our our albums that we liked were like that. A lot of times there there's a lot of songs that don't relate sometimes to other songs on the album. So, you know, our our first album is it's very diverse, and and we're not we're not really afraid to go. You know, we're primarily '70s blues based um, rock, and uh, but we're not afraid... about some of the tracks. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, we're, you know, we're not afraid to get into some of the, uh, some of the days where, where guys wrote, you know, longer songs and bands yeah. wrote long songs and we, we weren't afraid to go there. You know, we, we, uh, we didn't have any rules in place. Uh, the four of us kind of got together. We, we absolutely enjoyed what each other writes, what each other plays. And, uh, you know, we just started writing. And at the time there was, there wasn't really a plan of what are we going to do? Or hey, we're going to write a bunch of songs, record an album, and go on tour. There, there really wasn't a, a big plan. Uh, the 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 big plan really was, you know, we've all kind of have done things in our past, and we've been sure. there, and we've done that. And I think we all wanted to, at this point in our careers, do what we wanted to do, and we wanted sure. to write songs that we wanted to write, and and make a, a record we wanted to listen to. And so sometimes you get those those longer anthems, you know. Take My Hand um, is one of the songs on the album. goes into a, a lot of different moods all within one song. And, uh, you know, that's that's pulled right out of this, the style of the 70s. Where and, 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 and I'm sure from growing up that, that in that era, um, like, like many of us did, um, you know, a song like Take My Hand, that's a great example. I mean, it tells me that yeah. you guys are thinking much more than just simply, um, you know, the songwriting process. It's much like um, when you're writing a song... Um, Okay, well, we need a kind of an up, uh, you know, a, a kind of an anthem type of tune. So, you know, when we're yeah. playing live, we can really get the crowd going. You know, 
Yeah, you know, it's a it's it's a little bit of a double edged sword sword with us um, because when it when it comes to okay, we've got this body of music, we've got these songs. Um, what what do we want to put out there? You know, and it it's so it's so hard because you can't just put one atomic king song out yeah, yeah. and say this is atomic kings because because not, really none of the other songs are like that one and so really it's it's a very album oriented band it you know yeah, we, i got, I got really, that feeling really and, you know, know. And, and you know it's interesting because um you know i well you well you guys in the band you know these are these are songs that you've written and you're very close and yeah. You know, you've been living with these songs, I'm sure, for you know several several months, at least yeah. a couple of years. And so, but listening to myself, very with some very fresh ears, that's exactly the feeling I got. And then I also got the feeling like um, what's interesting is I, I'm sure you discovered this as you were um, creating these songs and bringing them to life. Is that um, you know this isn't like your fourth or fifth album. This is a debut album. You're, you're kind of in the mode of you guys are creating that atomic king sound if you will there is no yeah. set box at this point so that's why you're able to go in and kind of just well this is what we're creating these are the songs the way they are whatever kind of comes out this is this is us you know at this point in time and i think um maybe that's why the album has that sound because you guys there was no expectation you just kind of went in there because this is a debut album you're kind of trying to make a lost kin See if he comes back, but wow, wow, wow. Are you there? Uh, yeah, I hear you, Ken. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, maybe the video will come back on, um, but if, if not, we can we can carry it on, um, the conversation. So there you are. There you go. Okay. That, we, got, we, part love our wonderful, yeah. we have to love our wonderful internet, don't we, Jason? Yeah, yeah. That's the fun part of doing these interviews. I mean, there's always kind of a great story to tell. Um, in fact, yeah, um, I invited you to come on another show I do called This Is Metal. And the first show we did with the new co-host, um, Tom, is very funny because um, right in the middle um, of doing the show, his computer wanted to update. <laughs> so things like this um, we're, we're used to. But but yeah, getting back to the album, I think it's neat because you're in a place in your career where there's not that said box. You, you were able to kind of go and create the Atomic King sound. And I think yeah. maybe on the next album, you kind of have a blueprint, if you will going forward yeah you know um and it's it's funny because because that's one of the things as as a band we talked about um you know when when we had one song written and then two songs written and and then you know when when we went into the studio they they became a collection and and we at that point um had even mentioned to ourselves you know even though their songs are very diverse we can hear a, a definite each song is definitely Atomic Kings, and there's a definite sound there. Um, that is, you know, it's it's a lot of things. A lot of a lot of people that that have described it to us is it it sounds like a lot of things, but it doesn't sound like anything. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a great description, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you take a band like Deep Purple. I mean, they can do a song um, early in their career like Hush, and then you got like Smoke on the Water, you know, Highway Star. Yeah. Fireball, you know, without a doubt, you know, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm very into Zeppelin and, and, and Led Zeppelin was that way, you know, and they, they really changed from one album to the next, not just from song to song, but, you know, you take their first records and, and you look at the difference. Um, they, they really graduated throughout their whole career. And, uh, you know, we're, we are writing right now. We, we are going to, you know, after the first of the year, we're we're going to go in and record um, album number two. So we've been writing, um, and we've been doing some shows, and you know, we can already hear uh, the the same progress that you know that the songs are are continuing to not be really like the ones on the first album, but but it's definitely Atomic Kings, and you can hear that coming through. So it's really it's an interesting thing, <laughs> you know, to to hear that happen. And again, you, you, as you as you mentioned, Ken, you, you all got your um, past projects you've done, and probably you know the bass player Greg Chase, and uh, um, anybody that's like at all um, hard rock or metal fan probably aware of who he is. I mean, probably the biggest thing he did was was part of Jakey e. Lee's band um, Badlands. He did two, I think, three albums with them. Um, do you guys ever get that? Because probably Greg's the one member of the band that people probably know a little better. Everybody expects this to sound like Badlands. Has there been no, that? You know, 
it's it's really funny because um, when I was recording my vocals in the studio, they um, uh, Jason Constantine over at, at Tone House Records and uh, him and I had conversations. And uh, Ray Ray Gillen is one of my all time influences. I think he's one of the greatest vocalists there ever was, and uh, we certainly lost him too soon. But I was say died you know, tragically young, and it, it's just. Um, yeah. I mean, that's he's an interesting uh, case study because for a lot of reasons. But um, and just looking at his talent, I mean, um, I, I think with what he's able to accomplish, you know, come as known, well known as he was able to, it's just kind of the potential of what what he could have been, you know. It, well, and you know, and I and we were certainly seeing his potential um, with Badlands. Badlands was was an amazing band. Um, to to get to your point about Greg. You know, it's funny because we thought we thought we're going to get some of those comparisons. We thought, you know, how many people are going to want us to play a Badland song at a, at a yeah, show? Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting to, yeah. yeah. It's been interesting because it really hasn't happened. It's um, the, the Atomic Kings music has kind of has kind of carried itself. And I know I know I was the opposite of of what some people might have thought is. Um, you know, some of these songs I can hear, I can hear Greg for sure. You know, Greg does a, sure. a big portion of the writing and there's certainly um, some similarities to the, to the musical portion of Badlands and Atomic Kings. And, and I know that uh, when I was, when I was writing melody lines and singing, there might be something that, that I would throw out there in a rehearsal or something. And I, and I would remember thinking to myself, oh man, you know what, that's, that's sound a little, Ray Gilnish, yeah. <laughs> but, so, you know, Badlands, uh, I have those albums, and and when you hear some of that, some of that being written, your tendency is to go there. But unlike a lot of singers that that would that would climb aboard and say, "Man, I want to go out there and I want to sound just like Ray Gillen and and I'm going to play with Greg, and we're going to be the second coming of Badlands." And and uh, uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you guys did do that because I mean, yeah, I, I think the part of the reason is like even. A guy like me who's online and checking out new music constantly every day, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, there's the fact you reached out to me, Ken, but I had heard of Atomic Kings before that, and and it's um it's one of those bands kind of just creeping up up, up on people. What I mean is, um, a lot of people may not know have heard of you guys until you know they maybe it pops up on YouTube or something like that. And um, I think what's happening is people are kind of finding out about this band uh, through the music maybe and checking out the music and really listening to it with their ears not maybe even knowing who's in the band and maybe actually find, oh yeah that's the bass player he's the guy that used to be in badlands or whatever and, and it's yeah. kind of almost like a secondary little um no you know and i, well, I think it's yeah uh you know we did a we did a show um we just did a show saturday and uh we did a show with enough's enough and yeah. um it, it's funny because we we had a guy that that was sitting there where our merch booth was and he'd sat down and and I'd gone over there and he said, man, you know what I th you know what this band reminds me of a little bit. And I said, what's that? And he said, it sounds like um, sounds a little like Badlands. You guys have a little bit of a Badlands thing musically, <laughs> but if you're singing and and it's a little different bluesier guitar going on. It's it's like uh, it's like Badlands and freeing a bunch of stuff mixed together. And I said, really? And I said, well, do you know do you know who Greg yeah. is? And he said, Greg. I said, Greg Chason was the bass player in Badlands. And he said, oh, yeah. And I said, well, did you know that Greg Chason is our bass player? No, I had absolutely no idea. And that's funny and because, he, again, that's somebody who's yeah. really giving you an honest opinion. That, you know, it's not like somebody knew you. you know, oh, yeah, I, think so I, I called Greg and I said, hey, come over here. This guy, you got to hear this guy's story. But, you know, I purposely stayed away from that. Um, one, um, I have a lot of respect for Ray and 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 we we didn't just want to be a carbon copy you know we but you want we to have your own sound do. it makes sense you, yeah. you, um, and I think it's working for you and I only bring it up because um, um, so often you see stuff where like oh yeah let's check out this great new band featuring X Badlands bassist Ray Chasen and and that's like in all the headlines and I think what's great about the way this is working out I mean Ken you're you're a great huge talent I think um, in your own right as a vocalist. And it's oh, insane to be tagged as as great as it would be maybe to be tagged as the next uh, Ray, Ray Gillen or whatever. Um, well, I, you know, and I, for your own talent, right? It, it makes sense. 
I yeah. think that's probably why I stayed away. You know, it, when when I would come up with something and it and it and then it would remind me, and I know the other guys probably didn't catch it, but it, I myself knew I I didn't want to go there. I, I wanted wanted to Ray to stand alone, and you know nobody's going to sound like Ray. There's nobody going to sing like oh, Ray. No. Ray and I. Were, about the only similarity I would say between Ray and I are that we're both really blues singers and really, yeah, sure. I think uh, really fair. Ray was a blues rock singer with, yeah. with an incredible uh, range and an incredible oh, sure. voice. And, um, and you know, Badlands, yeah. interestingly enough, I think, you know, for many reasons, band should have been a lot more um, bigger than what they were, but obviously things ended the way they did. And I know for a while yeah. they were talking about getting a new singer, but I think, I think they made the wise decision to kind of just, you know, in the band. And, and interestingly enough, you know, the, the, the debut album, I think that's the one album people still kind of um, point to. And, you know, just as proof of, you were saying people, people cover other people's material. They did a great yeah. cover of the James Taylor song, Fire and, Fire and Rain. Yeah, that, um, I know that that actually came from a sound check that they, they used to do that in sound check. And so, you know, when, when Atomic King, Kings does sound checks, we, uh, we we tend to go off on our own as well and and uh you know like i say this this past weekend we probably wrote two atomic kings wow. uh songs at sound check but um you know it's a great band it's 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 really the the band itself is incredible you know jimmy taft is an amazing drummer and and obviously um greg chase on uh his playing and name speaks for itself but oh, sure. really when you put those two together it's it's really something special and and when you have a four piece band like this and we're we're doing basically blues rock sure. stuff but you know there's some modern twist in it but man when you have a rhythm section and you have such a such a, a foundation like that you know it really allows Ryan and I to to play over the top and I mean I, I yeah I, I gotta tell you Ken my my biggest problem in listening to your album is um I couldn't really pick a favorite track. I mean, um, they were all they were all just killer to me. I, I, again, sound like as long as you don't dislike all of them. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, I'm saying it was it was one of those experiences. And um, again, it took me back to um, albums that I grew up on. You know, where I mean, yeah. even you look at those great Alice Cooper albums that, that Bob Ezrin produced. I mean, great um, album. Yeah, great albums. They 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 had a theme, and the songs all sounded like they belonged on the same album. Um, that that is what this is, and and, and again, um, I think just the whole listening this in my own ears, but the whole band is on fire, and it's it's um it's much more than just um you know featuring the ex Badlands basis. The whole band is on fire. The 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 whole unit, you know, and it's one of those things you could really tell everybody seems got a chemistry. I mean, and I, you know, I don't know, um, maybe maybe you guys are all fighting in the studio, but but sounds like um well, you classic. know what it's um. It really is amazing chemistry. The band, uh, everybody just gets along amazingly. We we literally have zero arguments. Um, and and you know the 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 music that we write really is, it, it's really the only music I think we probably could write. It's we're, we're guys that really didn't. We were kind of stuck on our on our old albums as we were growing up, and and as music changed, you know we. We just kind of stayed on on what our favorite albums were from that. Kind of staying true to your who you are. I mean, um, I think when people could tell what you're writing, thinking, it, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's really the only the only way we could write because it's we're not really thinking of anything else. We're just, um, you know, we're we're doing what we do and and whatever that is is Atomic Kings and yeah. you know the the album's out. We're getting really great reviews. Um, it's out on Spotify now. Um, I know we 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 have an Instagram out there, not basically. Is there any page. plans for a music video? We we are working on a brand new music video right now. Um, it, we 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 just put out live not long ago. That was our second single, and there's a little bit of a video out on on that. But okay. right now we were are working on a brand new video um, that is going to be the third single off the album, and it it is going to be a full. It's going to be a full video full shot video and um and hopefully that'll be out soon and uh, you know we've got some shows coming up and um a lot of things happening so we're pretty excited and, you guys, and in the meantime, do, are you guys doing headlining shows or opening for like some national acts you know we do both um we we did a show with ace freely um we, we went out to albuquerque with uh the guys in um king's x uh this weekend we played with with chip and the guys in enough's enough 
you know, those are all great guys and Chip's an amazing guy. So, um, so, so we're doing those shows. Um, uh, but yeah, we also are doing our own shows here locally. And, and, uh, you know, we had a, an album. You guys release. are based out of Arizona. Is that correct? We're in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. You ever run into George Lynch? <laughs> yes, actually, actually we do. Um, I actually ran into George a few months back. He actually played at the same venue we did this past weekend. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. And, uh, uh, he wow. had a show up there. So he's a little north of us. He's up, um, up on Lone Mountain, but Anyways, I love I love the fact doing a show, you know, Atomic Kings and Kings X. I mean, that the two Kings. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that was an interesting thing. But you know, I I love Kings X and I love I love the way they ride as well. So, but uh, you know, we're 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 writing. We um, the band really writes quickly. It's it's some songs we write, they just come together. So really, um, it's a good problem to have, but it's a really oh sure. Uh, prolific songwriting band yeah. and the fact that you guys are already thinking about um writing album number two i mean um do you think yeah, that'll come out know. next year that that album will be back yeah that album will be out next year um we we are probably we probably have about four songs um uh, five or so and we've got a we've got a couple more we're working on right now so yeah, yeah we uh that's what this band does is is right music. And, I mean, I, I love it. That that took me back to some of those great bands that we talked about, yeah. Aerosmith, Kiss, and you know, um, Deep Purple yeah. used to put albums, you know, like two albums out a year or whatever. Um, and, and why wouldn't you, you know, with this quality of music? And and I gotta say, um, you know, a lot of bands have the mentality, and I guess you really can't have this mentality being an up and coming new band. But um, why why bother putting out you know full length albums? We'll just put like a four or five song EP up. I'm glad you put a full length album out because it, you know you yeah. guys made such a huge statement with this album and and why why give your fans just like five new tunes each time give us a give us a you know a full package if you will <laughs> yeah you know and we uh when when we first got together that's that's really what we were we were a songwriting band and um I and it's funny it because we wrote We'd, we'd written um, we'd written a handful of songs and and Greg runs uh, bizarre guitar out here in Phoenix and and in fact Ryan works with him there and they they put on a, a thing locally here every year where they close the street off and there's several thousand people that are out running up and down the street there well bizarre guitar is right out on the street and so wow. the guys had got a hold of me and said hey man you guys want to come over and see if we can get some trouble and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so what we did is about the time the street got full, we just brought a whole PA and, and everything. We sat it right out in the parking lot. We just started playing our songs. And our, our thought was, well, we'll play till we get kicked out or get arrested or whatnot, because we certainly didn't have a permit. But uh, yeah. one thing is, um, Night Bob is a, is a guy that used to work with Greg uh, back in the Badlands days. He's an incredible live sound man. Well, some of these guys saw some of these videos. And and they're actually the ones that reached out to us. And Greg had got to talking to um, to Jason Constantine online there with Tone House Records. And um, so really, the the record deal came from us literally playing out in that parking lot. But wow, you know, wow, that, wow. which but, yeah. to that point, we're we're just a you know we're a group of guys writing songs, and and we'll always be that. You know, even if even if we we didn't release an album, even even if if there was nothing that's you know a, a lot of musicians and no no matter at what yeah. level everybody's got a songwriting thing in them and and the four of us here uh we just have a lot of song writing going on between the four of us and 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 you have to get that out and so really if nothing was to even become from it other than us get together Jamming. and play the songs that we we would still write music i and, mean you know it's kind of and, like and so um, the Beatles individually are great, but um, when they all four came together, it was magic. And that, that's what this is. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. And I know it's it's sort of cliche to say that, but, it, you know, it really is. And the four of us know it. And, and we all know that if there was if there was anything to happen to one of us, you know, that that would probably be the, the end of this because it's such a, uh, you know, it, it's Special unit. it's yeah. such a camaraderie, such a chemistry that that happens. And um when when you start putting songs together you know you can't yeah you have to really understand mentally where each other is going sure and where they're coming from you know otherwise you just stand in the room and no let's try this no let's try this no yeah. i don't like that let's yeah. and you, you never really get anywhere but the great thing with with this band is 
is it's more of a, yeah, you know what? That's great. I love that. And I'm going to try this. And that's great. And it's, it's really the opposite. And it, it's a nice problem to have, but it's, it's really very much all of us together. Um, you know, writing the songs, completing the songs, you know, they, they, they mostly come, the ideas mostly come from Greg and Ryan and, and they'll, you know, they'll bring it to the table. And, uh, a lot of times, Greg or Ryan will have a big portion of the song. Some of the songs we've basically written from scratch, and so and then you and then you spread your vocal magic all over it, right? <laughs> yeah. Then uh, you know, I I uh, normally my melody lines come come fairly instant. They they're they're very spontaneous. Um, when the guys start writing and and I start hearing a rhythm and I start well, hearing. Ken, a rhythm. I I I gotta thank you for reaching out to me. I really enjoyed um, getting to know I, you. I appreciate, um, I appreciate we, we that. We'll to keep in touch and do, be doing this again. Um, Maybe even when the um, video is ready to drop, you let me know and, and I'll reach out to you. This should be going up in about a week or so. Um, once I have a date, I will be sure to let you know. Feel free to share it. Take care, my friend. I will Absolutely. be in touch. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks, Jason. Anytime.